Welcome back. I am with Greg Engert, beer director for the neighborhood restaurant group of Food and Wine Sommelier of the Year. The group includes where we are, bustling Blue Jacket Brewery, uh, and downstairs the Arsenal Restaurant. You've also got Rustico in uh, Alexandria and Boston. Greg, great to see you. Great to see you too, buddy. What is on tap this week? Well, this week, I figured the, the holidays are approaching, so this is my gift to you. Um, mm, I like a, presents. Uh, uh, a little bit... Uh, later than it came out, but there's still some kicking around, and uh, this is Bourbon County Stout. It's from Goose Island. We wait for it once a year. A new variant, though, this is called Regal Rye, um, a kind of spin-off of the standard Bourbon County Stout, as they do each and every year. Um, and, you know, it releases Black Friday. A lot of it goes right away, but then you can still find a little bit here and there. Um, certain bars and restaurants and even retail outlets will have it. Um, but I'm really excited about this beer because this is new for this year. They've never made Regal Rye, this variant, as they, uh, in this way. So it's got your same base Imperial Stout that they create and craft just to be aged in these barrels. Rather than being aged in the standard bourbon barrels, it's aged in rye whiskey barrels um, from Jim Beam and Heaven Hill. Um, and then uh, all of this happens over a, a one-year maturation for all of the bourbon counties. So they put it in in late, late summer, and then they empty and fill uh, the following late summer. Um, and so at the end of this, though, they added some Michigan tart cherries into the barrel. And then they blended it with some blackberry juice from Yakima Valley in uh, your old Washington state, um, as well as some Luxardo um, candied cherries so and a little bit of sea salt at the end as well it's kind of a play on a manhattan in some ways <laughs> it smells so inviting you know you just get a little hint of all of those uh ingredients and you're right and that is the that's the coolest part i mean it's pretty it's pretty good yeah, yeah. Uh, the coolest part about this beer is like it is so much like all the other Bourbon County variants and nothing like it at the same time. And that's really what, how you define complexity, right? I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's definitely that Bourbon County rich, chocolate, fudgy, um, round base, but in the nose, you get a little of that hint of that cherry. On the palate, it's amazing, like, like forest, like berry fruit, cherries in the background, and even like a little of that salt kind of livens it up on the palate. It's tingly. I mean, it's 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 not exactly the same. I don't want to say it's like a piece of candy, but it's reminiscent of dark chocolate with yeah, cherries and totally, you know that yeah, yeah, sort of chocolate covered cherries and things like that. Um, yeah, it's phenomenal, wow. phenomenal beer. Eminently ageable, right? I've I've aged Bourbon County, the regular Bourbon County, before forever. I mean, it's amazing for that. And then the other thing is, you know, a lot there's some people out there. Well, so Bourbon County every year comes out. It's been doing. Uh, they've been making it for 23 years now at Goose Island. Um, they've got about over 3,000 oak barrels that are filled with this, um, this beer each summer, like I mentioned. Um, and the, now the program is, is they come out with standard Bourbon County Stout and more of that than, than all the others. They always have a version of coffee where they'll add um, some kind of coffee. This year's Nicaraguan coffee roasted by, always roasted by Intelligentsia Coffee in Chicago. Um, and then they also release barley wine, which has been aged in um, the bourbon barrels that previously held not just bourbon but the, the stout itself. Those three come out and then they do their variants. There are some people out there who say don't age the coffee and the fruited variants because it loses some of that intensity. But I even love to age those because it gets like, it just, it just evolves over time so well. Uh, now this would be great, uh, I think obviously by itself, right. but aside from that, what would you pair it with? Well, so with pairings, I, I, I guess I was kind of thinking about earlier more in the line of like, kind of has like a cocktail quality to it. You know, it's big, it's rye, it's, you know, cherries, uh, thinking about like Manhattans and started thinking about just like big, huge steaks, prime ribs, lamb um, of any kind would be great. Cause it's gotta have something to hit it with, but maybe something less um, formal. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome with barbecue. Like that kind of fruity chocolate flavor is really delicious with like tomato based, like brisket, like Texas barbecue and things like that. Delicious. Greg, thank you as thank always. You. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and please be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.